On a late summer's evening, you might notice something rustling around your garden. Hedgehogs. One of Britain's most charismatic mammals, and a creature you can encounter up close. We were lucky enough to film this pair in courtship. But winter is coming, as they say, and soon hedgehogs will disappear as they find a safe place to hibernate. But there are reports that across the country, hedgehogs are disappearing on a more permanent basis. Is it true? And if so, what's the cause? First, what's the evidence for a decline in hedgehog numbers? Well, estimating mammal populations is extremely difficult. Despite this, several conservation organisations have conducted studies that strongly suggest declines are taking place. Over the long term, the British Trust for Ornithology's Breeding Birds Survey, which also records hedgehogs, found a 66% decrease between 1996 and 2009. In the 1950s, it was estimated there were over 30 million hedgehogs in Britain. Now, there is probably just over 1 million. This finding is supported by declines measured over more recent times, such as those noted in the Mammals on Roads survey run by the People's Trust for Endangered Species. This survey also noted a decline in reports of roadkill hedgehogs, and together the data suggests significant declines across the country. So, bad news. But what's the cause of hedgehog decline? Well, usually at this point, someone likes to say badgers are the problem. And let's face it, who doesn't like to blame badgers? There's even some circumstantial evidence. Badgers do eat hedgehogs. And, as the hedgehog population has declined, badger numbers have increased. Uh, probably. Again, it's difficult to get population estimates but there is evidence the number of badger social groups has increased by 88% since the 1980s. While hedgehog numbers do sometimes increase in the absence of badgers, that's exactly what you'd expect when any predator is removed from an ecosystem. Badgers and hedgehogs have coexisted for thousands of years. It would be pretty odd for one to suddenly drive the other towards extinction. So, while badgers might have local effects, on a grand scale, things are more complex. I went to meet Dr. Tony Bernal, who, as well as studying hedgehogs, also cares for sick and injured animals. There isn't one single reason, as you probably know, um, and nobody is completely able to identify the reason why we've got the massive decline. You've got uh, badgers, okay, badgers have lived alongside hedgehogs for thousands of years, we all know that. We've got a decrease in habitat, not just uh, habitat loss, but we've got habitat fragmentation, which means we have isolated pockets and a reduction in the number of green corridors connecting one pocket to another. That doesn't help. So we can pretty much rule out badgers as the main reason for the 97% fall in hedgehog populations in the last 50 years. Uh, and this obviously is heading for an extinction. Whether we get total extinction throughout the UK, we don't know. We might have isolated pockets, but then again, if you have isolated pockets, you have uh, reduced uh, limited gene pool and um, um, reduced chance of viability for that population. In rural areas, habitat destruction and fragmentation is often caused by intensive agriculture. For example, the removal of hedgerows and permanent grassland. Application of pesticides in the resulting landscapes will also contribute to a reduction in the number of invertebrates, essential hedgehog food. Habitat fragmentation is also happening in urban and suburban areas, as we both fortify and tidy up our gardens and generally make them unfriendly to hedgehog visitors. We've got reduced uh, roaming abilities from one garden to another due to fences being put right down to the ground. Everyone's well aware of that now. Mm. We have drownings in ponds. A lot of people love ponds, but they don't appreciate that the hedgehog can't swim forever and therefore can't climb out. And both rural and urban areas are being increasingly crisscrossed by roads. While roadkill is not the main cause of hedgehog decline, increased numbers of roads and volume of traffic prevent the free movement of hedgehogs between isolated pockets of habitat. To further complicate the situation, there's also the issue of parasites. Lungworm, 
it's very high up on the list. This is not the same lungworm that's found in dogs, it's a different species entirely. But this year, this is year 25 that I've been running York Hedgehog Rescue, I've had hedgehogs that have been put back in the wild at 800 grams, they've been monitored, they've come back in, um, the weight's crashed within four or five weeks, and this has happened throughout the UK. And we have another parasite called the thorny-headed worm, and we seriously need, we need a serious study to be carried out to be funded by somebody, maybe British Hedgehog Preservation Society or People's Trust for Endangered Species might like to look more closely at this. So lungworm and thorny headed worm. So we're not quite sure what the main cause is. Perhaps each of the factors we've discussed are all playing a part. And all of this raises an important question. What can we actually do to help hedgehogs? One thing would be to get involved in a citizen science project helping to monitor hedgehog numbers. Why not visit the website for the People's Trust for Endangered Species or the British Trust for Ornithology and see what surveys they are currently running that help monitor hedgehog numbers. Another thing to do would be to make your garden more hedgehog friendly. We'll be exploring how to do that in an upcoming Eco How episode. If you'd like to learn more about Dr Tony Bernal's work helping hedgehogs, you can purchase her book from her website. So, we might have painted a fairly grim picture of the state of hedgehogs in the UK, but with people like Dr Tony Bernal and major conservation organisations researching their plight, and members of the public helping out, there's definitely hope, and that is always a good thing. Until next time. <laughs>